Are we all good? You want to start off? Hello. Yeah. Hi, Kaden. <laughs> good morning or good afternoon for you guys. I guess. <laughs> All right, excellent. So we do hear you guys. All right, so if everybody that's in the room could please um, repost the space, comment below, like it, let's uh, DM your friends, let's get more people in here so they can uh, learn more about Caden and his wonderful art. He is very excited to share more about it today. So I'd love to have more folks in the room. All right, and what we're going to do first is uh, so I'll do a quick introduction for the space in case anybody's here for the first time or maybe listening back to it for the first time. Uh, Jenny will then introduce our special guest for today, and then we'll start talking uh, to, to Kaden and Nico. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, um, so this is a space uh, that I had started really to shine a spotlight on talented artists who are part of Web3. Uh, we like to do very in-depth interviews to learn more about the artists behind the art. And in the process, we hope to bring more awareness to the artists, to help make new connections in the space, and hopefully to also inspire people who might have creative passions of their own to start their own journey in Web3 or just even making art. It's a very inclusive space, so we welcome artists of all nationalities, of all backgrounds, of our different artistic styles. Uh, from seasoned professionals to just emerging talents. We really want to bring you guys a very diverse range of voices from the Web3 community. And we love to celebrate how art and creativity bring us all together. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Jenny to introduce our special guest for today. Thank you. Kaden is a prolific and talented young artist who has touched the hearts of many. His father, Nico and Mother Wianka are on a mission to provide a bright future for Caden through his love of art, as well as shine a spotlight on autism awareness. Caden has collections on several chains and platforms and is well known in the Web3 artist community. He has a documentary in the works, which will help share the amazing story of this family and young artists to a larger audience. It is truly an honor to have them here today. And with that, Giancarlo and I welcome Caden and family to the stage. Welcome, guys. How are you doing today? So good. We are very good. Thank you. Aww, we're very, very excited <laughs> really to have you. Okay. All right. So first thing I wanted to ask you, Kaden, was um, when did you first start creating art? When did you start? Uh, when did you start about? doing paintings? Were you still small? Do you remember how old you were? You were eight. You two? You two? Eight, three. Eight, 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 three. three. We're gonna go with small John Carlo. Very small. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, Kaden, your dad told me that you have some art that you want to share with us today. And we would love for you to show it to us and tell us more about it. We're really excited about that. Okay, that is just going to get you your paintings that you chose. Thank you, Carl. Oh, I love one. Uh, which one is this? I love one. I love one. And which, what is this one all about? About Valentine's Day. About Valentine's Day. Wow. So sweet. And what do we do on Valentine's Day? Give flowers to girls. We give flowers to girls. Okay. Let's bring that down. Must we put that one down? Okay. And what's the next one you want to show? Space robot. Oh no, naughty robot. The naughty robot. robot. I think I saw there was a, a post about this one on on uh, on X. Yes. There was a post about this one. This one was actually especially created for um, one of his biggest naughty robot holders. Um, she asked him, she sent him a video asking him if he could make her a very own special naughty robot. That's so sweet. It was very sweet of you to do that. Yes. Let's sit down over here. Okay. And what is the next one you want to show? The stars. The stars. Yes. So it's and a, can you show them where the stars are? Yeah, do. Are they the yellow ones? Yes, they are. And the sky is what color? Blue. Blue. And this one you created, what did you do with this one? Why was this one made? Why did Karen paint this one? I don't know. Was it for the color? 
collaboration? It was. Which one? Right. Have you forgotten? I've forgotten. Okay, this one was created for the collaboration with Anna. This oh. is actually the background to the oh. blue sky. So cool. So yes. that's the one with the Luna? Is it with the Luna collab? Yes, that's the one with the Luna collab. Uh, the next the one, fire. the fire one. Okay, do you want to tell them more about the fire one? Orange. Fire is orange. What other colors are fire? Yeah, red and black. And black. And what? what is fire? Dangerous. Is it dangerous? Okay, you want to tell them why we don't play with fire? It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous, yes. It burns you. It can burn you, yes. And what else can it burn? Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything else you want to tell them about the fire piece? It's it. Hmm? Is that it? That's it. Okay. You put that down. You place that down. No <laughs> it's problem. Is this a rainbow explosion? Wow. And who did you paint this one to? Or... Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> and you want to tell them about all the colors you used on the rainbow explosion? Red, red, yeah, you're blue. Orange, green, purple, pink, brown, 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 and green. And green, wow. It's so sweet. It is a sweet painting. It's just white there. And it's white as well, yes. And what other colors did you use on it? Gold. Oh, you used some gold as well. Okay. So nice. It is a very nice painting. It's I agree. pink. There's uh, pink as well, yes. Here, blue. Okay. Anything else you want to tell them about the painting? They're uh, red. Okay. Red colors. Rainbows, yes. Red colors. Good job, man. Place it down. Yes, you can put it down. <laughs> Good job. Well, I really like those paintings a lot, Caden. Thanks for sharing them with us. You do. I do. They were so colorful. Oh, and I love the kitty cat you guys have. <laughs> Yeah, you want to tell Don Cola how many cats do you have? Five. You have five, five, five cats. Uh, you want to tell them what, what their names are? What are they called? Cold. Cold. And Niska and Bella and Belly and Cold. Wallow. Wallow. Which one was just on the table, yeah? Yes. Kaden and Daddy. No, no. Kaden and Daddy are still here, but which kitty jumped onto the table now? I think the table. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> no, it's okay. So cute. So, <laughs> right, Daddy, you want to go to your question? Well, sorry, sorry, John Collins, ask again. Well, I was telling Jenny if she wanted to go to her question. Of course. Sure. Um, I wanted to ask you what your favorite color is. Do you have a favorite color? What's your favorite color? Green. You love green. Wow. It looks like a tree color and grass colors. Like tree colors and grass colors. Good job. Help me. Yes. Yeah. I love trees. I'm, I have a friend who's a tree. <laughs> yeah. He has walls in it. There's walls in the house. Right. There's walls in the house. You want to ask Jennifer more about her friend that's a tree? It's a tree. Yeah. Every day I go for a walk and say hi to my tree and I give him a big hug. Me too. So Jennifer, you also used to have a tree who you loved very much at our old house. Old old house. Yes. That's so nice. Was it a big tree? It was. They grew from mud. They grew out of the mud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they crawl from the mud. They go big and bigger. Yes, yeah. Go big. I was yeah. Um, do you have a favorite animal? Uh they cats and dogs. <laughs> cats and dogs. So nice. Do and you want to tell them how many dogs you have? Three. You've got three dogs. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah, he's got a golden retriever, he's got a Labrador, and he's got one which we're not quite sure what breed it is. Mm. What, is oh. what does that one look like? 
Um, um, Mittens is a black dog, black dog, which we think it's might it's be, uh, well, when we got Scott Mittens, we thought it was a, um, a shepherd. Shepherd? But as she got all the yeah the other traits, <laughs> um, yes, Love mm. it. so Caden, do you have a favorite movie? I think I think animation movies. Animation movies. Wow, which one? I think Cloudy in a in a change of meatballs. <laughs> cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Wow. With a change of meatballs. <laughs> My kids <laughs> like that one too. These are animation movies we can watch. Good job. Mm. Cool. And um, aside from making art, what else do you like doing for fun, Caden? What does Caden do for fun? Yeah. Uh, ping. Yes, we know you. Okay, we know you paint. Um, <laughs> do you like building Legos? It's so fun. <sighs> yeah, but you like paint. Okay, do you like building Legos? It's so fun. Yeah. I like that. You like that. Do you want to tell them what is your favorite Lego? Um, I like Teddy the most. The city. You like the city Lego series? Do you want to tell them which city Lego you like most? The Lego City Avengers. The Avengers. Okay, which number? Of season one. Season one, but which number of them? What is the state's number? 2021. 2021. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a big fan of Lego, Lego City. Mm. Um, so when we're not painting, we both Legos. There you go. Click, click. I do go click, click. <laughs> <laughs> Lego clicking. Lego go click click. I do. Like the finger in a Lego. Put it in an age of porn. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna tell them how many Legos you have? So well, we got 2022, we got 2023. How many sets do you have? Everything. No, you don't have everything. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> You don't have everything, but you're working up towards that. He was, he got 1,000 Legos. No, unfortunately, you also don't have 1,000 Legos because we don't have the space for 1,000 Legos. Okay. One day. One day. Okay. That's for Legos. And what else do you want to tell them? They look nice. They look nice, yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, say bye bye to them. Okay, you wanna say bye bye now? Okay. okay. Guys, is it okay? Yes, because yes, it's perfect. Is... We got through most of the okay. questions we had for Caden, so thank you. Okay. You wanna wave and say bye? I'm gonna wave bye. Bye. Glad to see this is well. Good job. Okay, you go, you go do that. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Okay, so this he's actually sat still a lot longer than I thought he would, to be honest with you. Yeah, he did pretty good. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. No, it was perfect timing too, because those were some of the questions we had for him. And so now we can segue to maybe more that we were hoping you would answer for us as well. So it's perfect. Of course. Of course. Okay, so I, I have a question for you, Nick. Credit your lovely wife, Lianca, with introducing you to crypto art and NFT yes, okay, you, you can type that. Okay. Good. <laughs> I just wanted to get his truth. Love it. Can you share with us how the sales from Caden's artwork have played a positive role in your family's life? Um, yes, I actually can. Um, well, I think a lot of you are aware that you know our whole journey into the NFT space started with the whole mission to raise funding for Cadence Education. Um, we unfortunately find ourselves living in South Africa, where you know we don't really get any support education-wise from our government here. Our public school systems are 
they're really, really degraded. They're not, you know, when I was a kid, when I went to school, our schools were amazing. They were great, you know. Um, they, if you had special needs, there was a, there was special classes where they helped you. If you had a reading, if you had issues with reading, or if you were autistic, or you know, there were special special classes for that. When I went to school, unfortunately, South Africa has changed a lot since I was a kid. Um, it's now to the extent where our public school systems that just don't cater for kids like Adam. And it's not just being autistic, it's if you are blind or you are hearing impaired or you are, you've got Down syndrome, you know, or you've got some other mental disability, there's just, there's no catering for that. Um, the few public schools who actually do try and cater to kids like that just put them all in the same class, which just doesn't work, you know. You you can't mix um, you can't mix kids who are autistic with kids who are blind. It's just not the same. It's not on the same spectrum. So you are pretty much left with um, your choices of private schools. There's a lot of private schools in South Africa who cater specifically to a need. So if your kid is autistic, they cater for that specifically. If you've got a child who's got um, issues with their hearing, they cater to that. If you've got kids who are blind, they cater to that. But I think everyone can also put one and one together. Private schools cost arm and leg. It doesn't matter where in the world you are. It's, it's an expensive endeavor. Um, rough idea, we are a middle class, or what we would like to call a middle class family in South Africa. Um, I earn what, in general, what the general public will earn. Uh, Private schooling for Caden is half of what I earn a month. Then I've not, I've not bought, uh, I've not paid for his uh, medications. I've not paid for any of Caden's therapies. You know, if, besides education, Caden has got speech therapy. He's got occupational therapy. Um, he's got art therapies also at one point, but he decided now he's not a fan of that anymore. He had music therapy. Um, all these therapies were to actually help him to speak because. When Caden got diagnosed, he was nonverbal. You know, he did not. He did not. Like what you saw now, that was not what Caden was as a little kid. He did not speak. He did not make any sounds. He just didn't reach that milestone. So, um, you know, COVID happened. It changed a lot of things in a lot of people's lives. It hit South Africa very, very badly. Our economy really buckled underneath COVID. Uh, a lot of businesses closed. Um, a lot of industries took a very hard beating. Uh, I'm a diamond evaluator by trade. Um, you now, some of the first industries that go is your luxury stuff because it's just not needed. Uh, so, you know, I was not earning a salary. We couldn't afford to keep going to school anymore. You know, we had to make a, a lot of very tough decisions very quickly. Um, you know, we had to pretty much decide, doesn't do we keep a roof over our heads or do we keep on sending Kaylin to school? Um, it's not a decision we made very lightly. I will add that in as well. Um, we tried so hard not to reach that point. Um, you know, we went to the extent where we literally sold all our furniture. Um, you know, the furniture we have now are furniture which were given to us by family you know we've got a dining room table which belongs to my wife's grandfather we've got mix and match stuff which was basically given to us um but you know we were literally fighting an uphill battle um you know we kept on thinking listen maybe i'll, I'll find more work maybe things will get better um it just they just didn't we we had to you know every little boy every little girl needs a home they need somewhere where they can feel safe, somewhere where they feel loved, somewhere where they don't have to worry, listen, is there going to be food on the table tonight? Am I going to have a bed to sleep in? So we took Caden out of school. Um, it really rocked his world. Um, Caden is a very, he's a very, very routine-bound little boy. Um, we've got a routine which we follow literally almost to the T every single day. If there's something that has to change on a specific day, we start preparing him a week or two in advance. That is, and this is what's going to happen. This is why it's going to happen. So from this time to this time, either we are not going to be home or 
um, you will be home, but someone is going to come and look after you because mommy and daddy is not going to be here. Um, you know, when we get up in the mornings, he wakes up six o'clock sharp, no alarm, every single day since I've known my child. That's when he wakes up. So when he wakes up is when everyone else wakes up because this is now when your day starts. Um, the first thing that needs to be done is we need to start painting. He gets his whole table ready. He packs out all his paints. He packs out all his paint brushes. He gets everything ready and then he starts painting. And then we make breakfast. He has his breakfast and then we have to go brush teeth and then we have to wash our face. Then we need to get dressed in a very specific order. Um, it's not you first put your pants on and then your shirt and then your socks. There's a very specific order how these things get done. Um, then we go and say goodbye to mommy. If it's a school day, then we go to school. And, you know, then he has his day at school and then I go pick him up. Um, so, Vianca said to me that, listen, we will find a solution. Um, and you know, we tried so many avenues. We went to charities here in South Africa. We went to Autism South Africa. Um, I stood in a queue to get into their offices for three hours at that stage. That's so many people are trying to get help because, like I say, our school the system is failing us. The government is failing us. Our medical aids are failing us. Um, you know, our medical aids, like Canon's medication, they don't pay for it because autism is not deemed as a medical condition, according to them. Um, if Caden has to go to his, um, like for instance, his occupational therapy, they don't pay for that. They don't pay for anything. When it comes to Caden, it's, everything is out of pocket. So she said to me, listen, let's just keep looking. There, there has to be a way. And she came to me one morning and she said to me, listen, I've not said, but I think I've got the solution. And you need to bear with me here. I live in a country where people barely know what Bitcoin is. Um, the general public don't even understand what a cryptocurrency is. And there I have my wife telling me about NFTs and about JPEGs and about selling it for something that I've never heard of. I don't even understand how it works. Um, but at that point, we have literally tried every single other avenue. And it was just not working. So it was like, you know what? tried everything else, what is, you know, what nothing to lose. Um, Gaiden was at that point creating, not like he's creating now, um, because now it seems to have gone up to the last five weeks have been a whole different level with him, with the amount of art he's busy pushing out. Um, so we decided to start minting some of his stuff onto the blockchain. Um, our first mints were on Polygon because we had to do this in a budget. We didn't really have money to pay gas fees and OpenSea wanted, I think, 500 US from us just to mint on Ethereum because you had to pay that activation fee. And we were like, we can't afford that. So let's just do what we can afford. We didn't know about Tesla at that stage. I didn't know about B-Chain. I didn't know about any of these other chains where it cost you nothing literally nothing to mint the NFT. So we started on Polygon and what she read in her research or everything pointed to Twitter. It was like, you need to get on Twitter. This is where you need to promote what you're doing. This is where you need to get your story out. This is where you're going to connect with people who connect and resonate with what you're doing. So we got onto Twitter and we tweeted. Listen, we tweeted for four months like there was no tomorrow. And we didn't have a single sale. Um, and she kept on saying to me, we must be doing something wrong somewhere because, you know, NFTs are booming. People are buying them. And then one day we received the most random DM I've ever received in my life um, saying, hi, stumbled across your profile. Love what you are doing with your son, really love the art, and I've just purchased one. And we received that famous OpenSea email, Yay. your item is sold, mm -hmm. which you know, it was mind blowing. You know, we were like, wow, okay, one, one sold. But in the same DM, the guy also said to us, listen, um, but I've never heard you speak on a Twitter space. You need to get on Twitter spaces. You need to connect with people who resonate with you. The first thing we DM back was, thank you for supporting our son and buying his art and supporting our cause. What is a Twitter space? 
<laughs> I know it sounds really, really stupid saying that, but we had no idea there was such a thing as a Twitter spice. So he was very kind. He walked us through it. Um, believe it or not, the day this actually all happened was on Valentine's Day of 2021. The 14th of November was our first sale. The 14th of November was the first time I spoke on a Twitter space. It was, at that stage, the most nerve-wreaking thing I ever did in my life. Um, Bianca had to sit next to me and hold my hand and tell me, it's okay, these people cannot see you. Um, they don't care what you look like. You just do your thing. And, you know, I stumbled. I am an odd. I didn't know really, because I, I didn't really have public speaking skills. I don't, didn't, you know, that was not part of who I am. <clears throat> But it had to become a part of who I am because I needed to get onto the spaces and tell people about us, tell people about Caden, tell people about what we are trying to do. Um, and you know, that's where it started. I started speaking on Twitter spaces and everything started with Fionca reading a simple little article online telling her about NFTs and blockchain technology and what can be achieved with it. And then I know she watched endless YouTube videos on, because, you know, I will also say this, um, minting something now is very straightforward and very easy, but when you've never, ever done anything like this, you know, sitting on OpenSea, trying to figure out what am I supposed to do now? Where must we go? What must we push? Um, why does it not want to take the file? Okay, the file is too big. Okay, now we have to go figure out how to get it smaller, but it, you don't want to lose the quality. So there was, it was a whole learning curve. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically how it started. That's how we got into this. Um, and here we are, um, almost two years down the line. Um, it's been, I'll be very honest here, it's been one of the most humbling experiences I've had in my life. Um, connecting with every single soul we've connected with on our journey. Um, all the people that we've met. Um, all the, the, the people whose stories I've gotten to listen to and see what they are doing and where they're coming from. Um, it's been a really, really humbling experience. Um, you know, it also opened my eyes to, you know, you might think that your situation is like really, really, really bad, but there's always someone who is even worse off than what you are. There's always someone that is struggling with something somewhere along the line. Um, it's also, it's shown me that, that just that little bit of kindness that you've shown to someone during the course of a day can change that whole person's life. It can, you know, really it not just make their day, but also point them into a direction that actually changes everything for them. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question, Jennifer. Oh, it answered it beautifully. And, uh, yeah, you hit on so many good points, and I'm so happy that it's had such a positive um, impact on your life. And I'm happy that Rianca, you know, brought it to your attention and that you guys just flourished, really. And I think it has to do with your ability to connect, Nico, and um, just a beautiful family. And I'm just so happy that you are in the Web3 community because, like you said, um, Kindness goes a long way. You guys are so kind. And I think it's such an inspiring story for so many of us. And a lot of us have learned from you all as a family and from Kate and as an artist. So, yeah. Thank you for that beautiful answer. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, Caden's work. Um, so for, for most of us, we know him for his very colorful abstract work. But more recently, he created the Chinese Zodiac Animals. Um, can you share with us why him creating those characters was an important milestone for Caden? Well, you know, Jennifer, I'm going to answer that question, but I feel I actually need to go just a little bit further back than the Chinese Zodiac. Um, we actually need to start off with the Naughty Robots. <laughs> um, when we showed you his proudest Naughty Robot he's created to date. <laughs> um, and why those were so unique, up until that point, Caden did abstract. He did not paint characters. He did not draw characters. Um, since Caden's he didn't really 
there was never a moment where you felt, you know, I want to paint the stick man or I want to paint a little house. Um, ever since Caden started painting and he started painting at a very, very young age, he was two or three when he started, you know, picking up a paintbrush and really going at it. Um, and this is due to having an art therapist who said, listen, you can express yourself. Here's art, you know, do what you need to do, go nuts. Here's colors, you can take colors and you can associate them. If you feel angry, like you want to break stuff, here's the color red. Just put that down on a piece of paper and take it to your mother and father and they will understand you are angry, there is problems, they need to sit down and deal with this. Um, color pink is for love. Um, you know, we at one stage before Caden was verbal, we had a, a chart the size of a world map taped to our fridge. Um, I still have it somewhere. I'll actually go pull it out one day and take photos of it and share it with everyone. But it had different shades of different colors on it. And we got to a point where we had a system that each shade of each color had a different meaning. Like the color blue in general is kind of associated, associates it with being sad. But now you can go take different shades because, listen, you can be sad or you can be depressed or you can be unhappy. You know, so there's different variants of what sad is to Caden. Um, the same with the color red. Listen, you can be angry or you can be angry that you are hurt. You know, there's different levels of that as well. So each little shade of each color was associated with different things for Caden. Um, there is one color which is black, which to him means being lost. If my son starts painting stuff with black in general, it's not a good sign. Um, as soon as he starts incorporating black with reds and all kinds of other colors, it's generally a, a point to this and there's something wrong, something we need to sit and talk. Um, then we got to a point where, you know, we got him back in school. It was going really, really good. And they decided, listen, they want to try STEM education with him. They want to incorporate a little bit more than what they're doing. So let's see what he does with robotics. Let's see what he does with um, having to do a little experiment. Um, my son is not very <laughs> electronically inclined. That is not his forte. So they built a little robot at school last year out of a kit. And the plan was you have to now take this robot, you've got an iPad, and now you have to code it to do a certain task. And he came home after that first ordeal with the robot at school. And he said to me, listen, we have a very big problem at school. And my first reaction was like, oh, no, what happened or what did you do? And he said to me, listen, there are naughty robots at school. And I was like, OK, um, do you want to tell me what's going on? He said, well, they are naughty because they don't, they don't want to listen to him. They don't want to do what he wants them to do. That in, in his book, that makes them naughty. I got on the phone with his teacher and she said, listen, um, the robotics thing did not go well. Um, he got very, very frustrated. He, he didn't, like, all, like some of the other kids, they immediately clicked it. Um, they understood what to do with the iPad. They understood how to go about this. And he was looking at them and he was like, well, my robot does not want to do what you, your robot is doing. Why? because I think I'm doing everything correctly. And he just decided, no, listen, no. I've had enough, this robot is naughty, it's not doing what it's supposed to do, and that's it. So I asked him, listen, um, can he actually show me what a naughty robot looks like? And that is where he came up with these characters, which at first glance look like Chinese characters, but that is Kaden's recognition of a robot who is naughty. So he... He painted and painted and painted those, and he made a lot of them. He's still doing them every two or three days. He sits and he paints a few. But then the new year started, and me and Bianca, we were talking, and you know, she said to me, this is the year of the rabbit, and he overheard us. And he was like, what is the year of the rabbit? So we explained to him that, listen, there is a Chinese zodiac, and the Chinese people, they've got a different animal for each year. So I was like, okay, um, 
can he paint the rabbit? I'm like, yeah, sure. If you want to paint the rabbit, you can paint the rabbit. Now, if you actually go into object and you go into that collection, you look at the first one he painted, you can still see it's very abstract. It's like what he does with his pointillism. He has he pointed the rabbit out. And you know, then it started going from there that he asked me, but listen, what is the other animals? So you guys pull it up. There we go. What is the other animals which are part of this, um, you know, Chinese zodiac? So we explained to him that there's 12 and we started showing him what these animals look like. And you might, what you see there, they're really, really cool. But I will also point out that most of those are the 10th or in certain cases, the 20th try before he actually got it to the way he wanted it to look. There's still three, which I don't know if he's ever going to finish them. Um, they got to a point where the frustration was just too much. And with Caden, it's, it's a combination of frustration and also obsession. Um, also with Caden, obsession sometimes leads to being very unhealthy. Um, you know, if you don't know what an unhealthy obsession looks like. Uh, with my son, it is getting obsessed with something he's painting, where it completely consumes him, it consumes his life. Um, the biggest problem we had with this obsession was his little hands. Uh, that is, uh, he created over 8,000 handprints when he was four. Um, he woke up one day and he decided he wanted to make handprints. It got so bad that the only thing he was interested in doing was making handprints. Caden didn't want to eat. He didn't want to drink water. He didn't want to sleep. Um, he just he wanted to make the perfect handprint. And it got really, really bad and really, really out of hand where we actually, you know, we, we got it in the help of a psychiatrist because we didn't know what to do. Um, he wouldn't eat. He bluntly refused. And... Now through being in school and, you know, therapy and all that, he, he knows when to put a pin in it. He knows, listen, okay, this is now getting to that point where it's going to get bad. I need to put a pin on this. I need to walk away. I need to go and do something else. And then I can revisit this at a later stage. Now, the three which are short in that collection is the dog, the ox, and the horse. Apparently, the horse, according to Karen, looks like a dog. The dog looks like a horse. And the ox... Um, doesn't even remotely look like something like an ox. So those are still works in progress. Um, like I said, I don't know if he will ever finish them. Um, he did try last week again. He sat down and he was trying to paint some dogs. Um, yeah, that did not go very well. So, yeah, that's, that's something which he's going to revisit. But like I said, these are a very big milestone for him. These are actual little figures. These are actual characters where, you know, if you look at the monkey, he tried to paint the banana in with the monkey because apparently monkeys like bananas. Um, the pig, there's an actual little apple that he painted in there. Um, as I know it doesn't look like a banana, but it's yellow. And according to my son, that is the banana. Um, if you look at the pig, there's a little apple in with it. Um, the one which I know he's the proudest of in that collection is his dragon. Um, and that dragon that is there, that is, I know he painted about seven days on that little dragon. He kept on adding dra uh, little layers to it, little strokes to it. Um, until he came up with that, and that is what he was happy with, and that is what we meant it. Um, something else I will also just throw in here. Um, everything that you do see minted is Caden approved. Um, so I do not just go and mint anything. If he tells me he is happy with something and he comes to me and he says it's finished, then it's the only time that I will actually scan it and mint it. Um, yeah. So <laughs> that answers that question. Yeah, and I remember you in um, in another space mentioning, it did answer that question. Um, thank you for that. You had mentioned in another space that uh, what we consider like something that uh, like a child would normally create, like for example, characters, actually is not something that Caden came to easily, that he had to like get to that point. 
um, yeah. I mean, I can remember when I was a kid, listen, I drew stickmen and I drew cars and I drew houses and, you know, I had like all these characters which I drew. Caden just, he didn't start like that. He started doing abstract and just going nuts. Um, listen, he created beautiful abstract pieces, um, but they were not like what your normal little kid will sit and draw and paint. Um, so, you know, those characters are a very, very, very big milestone in his artistic career. Um, I don't know if they will develop into anything more than what they are. Um, but, you know, we never know. We'll see what the future holds for him. He might see something which is like, you know, I really like this. I want to try and paint this. So we never know. Yeah, and I don't, I don't even know if there's like a pressure to do it. You know, like I get the being prolific is important and all of that, but it almost gives it like even more exceptionalism if it's like a smaller collection too. Absolutely. So there's an upside to it, and of course, he should create what he wants to create. It shouldn't be like a pressured kind of thing. So I love that, and I love the support and all the things you do to get that art out there, Nico really amazing um i did have a question you have a documentary coming out uh can you share what that experience was like and uh when we might expect to see it okay i would actually love to talk a little bit more about that now um documentary uh, for anyone who does not know there's a lot that goes into making a documentary which nico had was not aware of when we agreed to do this. Um, we started, the initial filming on this documentary started in January. Um, we only finished filming, I would say it's about a month ago, if I remember correctly, the last filming was done on it. Um, there's a lot of post editing and a lot of stuff that is still being done. Um, the finished product, we are expecting the first to the second week of January of 2024. That will be out and available. Um, we have started releasing little snippets, um, you know, just to show the community what we've actually been working on. Um, because one thing I did notice, you know, I thought it would be a lot quicker than what it actually was. Um, so, you know, I, I've been telling a lot of our community that, listen, we've been working on a documentary about Caden and what, about what he does, about our journey, about autism acceptance, and we're really excited to share this with you. But, you know, you get a lot of people that are like, but you keep on saying, when are we going to actually not see something? And when I was finally able to actually show the first previews, it was like, okay, there, finally, yes, what we've been working on so super hard. Um, to actually get Gaiden prepared for a documentary was a whole different animal. Um, as I said, my kid is very routine based. He's also very much, he, he's got his little space where he paints and there's a certain way it needs to be. When you want to introduce a new element into what he is happy with, it, it takes a lot. So, you know, he's used to me having a phone and taking like a little short clip of him doing his thing. But now when you put up a tripod and you've got mommy's camera on top of the tripod, you're like, okay, we're going to be using this now to make videos. He was like, nope, not happening. I do not want this thing anywhere near this. Go away. So initially, there was a lot of preparing. Um, after two weeks, he allowed the tripod to stand next to where he's mm -hmm. painting, but no camera on top of it. And then we worked our way up to having a camera. And then we, I was not allowed to switch on the camera, just the camera had to be there. And then after about a month, it was like, OK, you can now switch on the camera. I, I feel I am now ready. Let's, let's, let's do this. Um, you know, so there was a lot getting him ready to actually be fully happy with what is being done. Then, yeah, there was the last three days of shooting was actually really incredible and really special. Once again, we had to prepare little man two weeks in advance for what was going to happen. 
uh, the team who worked on the documentary are split up between the States and the UK, and they actually flew into South Africa to actually come and finish this documentary, to do the professional forming part of it, because if I look at some of the stuff which we filmed and I look at what they did, I was like, yeah, there's a reason why we are not filmmakers in this family. Uh, but we really did try. I think in total we shot over 300 and something hours of film. That is just what we did here at home. They came in and they shot from about 8 in the morning until about 6 at night. Um, Caden had a blast. He loved it. He loved all the attention. Um, he loved people being super excited watching him painting and doing his thing. He had a lot of fun. Um, but then there was also the part where, you know, they wanted to interview me um, to know what you know, this is all about, where our journey started, where we are going, um, what actually happened to, you know, get us into NFTs. Um, so, you know, we I told our story and it's part of the documentary. It's part of our journey. Um, Caden also, he had his part, which he played. He had questions being asked to him and he answered them and he had fun. And so this is going live, hopefully the first or the second week of January next year. Um, we are also planning on minting the documentary. Um, like I said, I've met the most amazing people on this journey. I've met people doing incredible things with the blockchain. And one of those things you can apparently do if you know how is you can actually mint a full length, 45 minute documentary, the whole file as is to chain. And you can then, if you want, airdrop that to your community. And that is what we want to do. Um, so we want to mint our documentary on chain onto the polygon chain because also we're not millionaires mm -hmm. can't afford to pay ridiculous gas fees but poly is going to be the most cost effective and it's the most widely accepted out of the cost effective chains and then airdrop it to we want to everyone who holds a piece of cadence art um i think we're going towards close to four four and a half thousand holders at this stage uh, drop it to every single person. If you hold a piece on Thes, we want you to have this documentary. Um, it's also going to be doing the film circuit in Europe. Um, it's also going to be donated to certain charities to use it as a educational tool. Um, the biggest idea behind this documentary is to spread hope. Um, that is something which is very important to us because um, I know how it feels to be hopeless, to feel like it um, doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to win. And the idea here is to show people that it doesn't matter what your situation is, doesn't matter how hopeless you feel, there's always hope, there's always a way. Um, <clears throat> you just need to be willing to look for that hope. There's always this glimmer of hope. Doesn't matter how dark it is, there's always light. Light is always there. You just need to find it. Um, you know, for me, when it comes to hope, you know, all we wanted was to get our kid back in school, and we couldn't get that done. Um, but then, you know, my wife, she she's the kind of person who doesn't give up. She she kept on looking for that hope, for that light, and she found it. And you know, after a lot of hard work and you know, a lot of that, we, we managed to raise the funds. We got Karen back in school. And I think it's important that people know that you must never lose hope. You must never give up because, you know, that is just not, it's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to just keep on trying because eventually you will get it right. So, yeah. That's, that's about the documentary, and that is why, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the documentary we made. I'm proud of the message that it sends. Um, I hope it touches people's lives. I hope it changes quite a few people's lives. I hope it gives the hope that, I, that we envision it will give. Because, you know, if I look at the world some days and I 
So I listen to Twitter Spices some days, and I listen to some of the people on Twitter Spices. This world really needs a lot of hope because there's just so much negativity and just so much bad in this world. And it scares me when I sit and listen to a lot of people. Um, you know, unfortunately, Twitter Spaces are it's part of my daily routine, if I now like it or not. Um, not so much as it used to be. It's a lot less now, but it is still there. And a lot of people who I met at the beginning of our journey, um, it's strange. I've seen them change in front of my eyes. I've seen what, it, what happens when hope gets taken away. Um, and these were some of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. And just by losing that little bit of hope, you know, it's like blackness just enters. And I really hope by seeing this, it will just give people hope again, show people that listen, there's still a lot of good in this world, a lot of good that can be done with the right attitude and, you know, the right drive. Um, you know, if I, if I look at where we live, you know, it's South Africa is really, on many levels, it's not a great country. Um, there's a lot of hopelessness here. There's a lot of struggle here. Um, like I said, our, the country it is, what I grew up in, the country it is now, you can't even compare the two. Um, but yet I, I don't want that to influence me as a person. I don't want that to take my positivity away. Because this is one other thing as well, Cadence Hall, if you want to, I hate this word project. This is not a project that's, that's for my son, that's his legacy. But it's about being positive. That is what it's about. If you look at his art, it's, it just makes you smile. You just want to smile if you look at all the bright colors. It, it, it's, it makes me happy. You know? I, and whenever I feel down, I just have to look at one of his paintings and you know, it just brings that the happiness, that light, that bright rainbow colors of the rainstorm, everything is there. Um, you know, I also feel that, you know, complaining never gets anyone anywhere. And that's another thing I said to a lot of people. I said, listen to a lot of people complain all day long. And then I thought to myself, but all this energy that you spend on complaining, you could have used it to change the situation. Um, Listen, let me be honest with you. I, where we live, um, about a month ago, they bombed a petrol station close to us. And that was because they wanted to rob it. They robbed it and then they bombed it. They wiped it out. Um, you know, very few people actually know how bad it is in South Africa, but I don't let it influence me because I, I think staying positive just, you know, it drives you into that direction you want to go in. Um, like I said, all the energy you spend on complaining and being negative, you can be much better used if you use it to be positive and to actually change the outcome of your situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually, a couple of days ago, read an article where uh, some institute did a study about measuring actual energies that were coming out of the human body. Um, and they were able to measure that the two strongest forces that come out of us are actually one, authenticity, which you would have thought love first, but actually now authenticity was the top one, and then love. And then all of the other things, which humans, for whatever reason, gravitate towards, you know, uh, fear, hatred, um, what you said about like how instead of complaining, you should be doing something with that. Um, and, and it showed it in the science, right? So I love that you know that instinctively and that you shield yourself from that. And that when you see that around you, whether it's in your physical environment or whether it's in Twitter spaces or here on X, excuse me, I still call it Twitter, um, you're able to still tap in to you and come back to that, to your authentic, joy and love and i really think that that's the reason that caden is such a, a 
a wonderful artist and you guys are almost like covered by that authenticity and that love. And instead of complaining about or, or getting down on the situation that you were presented with, you make something out of that. You create. And that's a daily choice. And I think that's a daily choice that all of us, when we look at you guys, should emulate and should aspire to imitate because it really is the way. And you guys have proven that by doing that, you can be successful. You said 4,000 collectors, right? 4,000 some, was that right? Uh, roughly about, it's probably approaching about 4,500 collectors across all 15 chains that Karen and Scott work minted on. That is amazing. Like, applause to you guys. Like, that is freaking amazing and inspiring and just proof that when you want to get something done and you don't lose hope, that is the outcome that you get. So, bravo. I mean, Nico. I can't say enough about you. And I'm so happy that this documentary is coming out um, and that the world is going to be able to really get to know you guys the way that a lot of us in Web3 have been so privileged to. Um, so yeah, just wanted to say that to you. Wow. <clears throat> I've been just so touched by this whole, you know, your story and the journey. And it brings me so much joy to, you know, because um, why I connect with it so much, you know, is I, you know, not that I have the exact same circumstances or anything like that, but, you know, I've had with my wife and I, we've had a lot of challenges, particularly with our, with our daughter. Um, you know, she's had some, a little bit on the, on the spectrum, autistic spectrum and a lot of challenges with like sensory problems. And we've had to deal with so many challenges of, you know, having to take her to like occupational therapy, having to be just extremely patient. Um, I can relate a little bit. It's not as extreme, but like the whole having to stick to a very strict schedule and having to really explain things and, and change, you know, in a, and do things in a very gradual way um, and how incredibly hard that can be, you know, and, and I know, I mean, I know it is no easy feat what you guys have had to go through. Um, and I know even where I live, like we live in the US where we do have, you know, medical insurance and other things like that. Um, and there is support and yet it is still incredibly expensive and challenging to get occupational therapy, to get special support in schools. It is it is still so challenging and so expensive. I and mean, we spend a lot of money. My, my wife has spent countless hours fighting with insurance companies to get treatment and things approved. I mean, to the point where it's like, it's just absurdly ridiculous. So just, you know, having heard your, your whole story and like the challenges you guys have gone through, I first and foremost wanted to like commend you from like the bottom of my heart for how amazing of a father you are. You know, you are just so incredibly loving, supportive. Um, what a role model, you know, like I, I, the fact that like you've done so much for your son and you and your wife, you know, just are, are incredible people. Um, and, and, you know, and, and the fact that like, despite how dire things got, you know, you, you haven't, you didn't lose that hope. Right. And you kept searching for a solution. You found something that was you know probably seemed crazy you know like you said people didn't know a lot about bitcoin or any of this stuff in, in south africa and you went for it and even after the you know four months of no sales and thinking are we doing something wrong you know that valentine day comes you make you make a sale and you continue to do it and you go on spaces even though you were afraid to speak in public and you weren't good at it and you got better at it and today you're speaking incredibly well with so much authenticity with so much heart i mean you touch my heart in this in this space and, and i know you probably connected with so many of the people here and fast forward you know and and uh going from one sale in that you know valentine's day back in 2021 to a point now where you know close to 4500 collectors across i believe i heard you say like 15 different chains um being able to get Caden the support that he needs. I mean, 
you know, getting them to school, getting the therapy. I mean, it is, it is so inspirational, so moving, um, man. I'm, I'm so glad that I, you know, I've connected with you guys and getting to hear this story because it is, it is so moving, so inspirational. And, uh, and it's really a testament, yeah, to just, you know, like what you said, you know, being able to, to know that there is hope, right? And I love the message that you guys are trying to convey with your, uh, with your documentary, you know, that, that there's hope, you know, that to spread hope, to spread that, you know, that I love you mentioned something, you know, that there's always light, right? That we just need to find it, right? I, I, I love what you said there with that. And, um, and it's true, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, the topic of, of, of positivity and all that, I think, you know, it is in a way practical, right, for us to be optimistic, right, and to be searching for ways to change our situations instead of just, you know, drowning out in, in, in complaining, right, and just being, feeling sorry about ourselves, you know, because, like you said, I mean, there, there's people in much even worse situations than us, and, and, and there's always, you know, li life is full of challenges, right, we have maybe a lot of different things, you know, but if we can, um, instead of doing that, focus on how can we make a change, right? And 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 do and making the, the the adjustments, the changes, taking the action to change things in our lives. You you can you know you can you can pull yourself out of whatever hole you've been in, you know, and and um, and that there is hope and there's light. And I I'm so, I'm so happy, you know, just to hear your story, to to see how far you guys have come, to see the journey. Um, and even just hearing about, you know, how, how much art has helped, uh, Caden as well and how it helped you guys even to, to communicate with him, you know, because, you know, he was he had trouble with verbal challenges and how he was able to like express emotions and nuances through colors and, and the breakthrough now of him, you know, going from just abstract to character creation. I mean, also beautiful. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to really, you know, commend you so much, Nico, on 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 this journey and on how great a parents you guys are. Um, you know, it's just absolutely wonderful. And um, I, I did want to know, maybe I know, so we know obviously the, the documentary is a big thing that's coming out. I love that you guys are going to do that, mint it on chain and share that with all your holders. I think that is that is so cool. It's such an awesome way to use uh, Web3. Um, I did want to know, you know, aside from the documentary, um, what other stuff can can we expect to see from you guys in the future? Any other projects, things you guys got coming out that you'd like to share with us today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, everyone knows my son is probably the most prolific little artist that has entered, ever entered Web3. Um, so now there is some other stuff which... Uh, we have been working on. Uh, we've got a we've got a mint which we are in the process of setting up, and it's the mint is not just about Caden. It's not just about his education. It's not just about what we are trying to do. It's also about actually giving back. Um, now we've done a few mints already, where you know some of the funds went towards Caden's. Um, educational fund and other some of the funds we actually donated. I'm actually very proud to say that we've been able to give back through Cadence Art. Uh, we did three months at the beginning of this year, which were in collaboration with uh, fairly big PFP projects, believe it or not. Uh, one was with The Plague. Um, Caden is a very proud holder of a plague frog that was donated to him. Um, Yes, my son does have NFTs of his own. We sit and look at them at least three times a week. We have to go through every single one. Um, he knows exactly how many they are and what they look like. So um, if anyone ever goes missing, he will be very upset and very heartbroken. Um, but yeah, we did a mint with them. Uh, we It was an open edition and it ran for two days and it did 180 something mints. Um, telling a total of 2.5 ETH, if I remember correctly. 30% uh, of that, we actually donated it back to Office in South Africa to help with what they are doing. And then we did two other consecutive months exactly like that, uh, also open editions of artwork he created in collaboration with the BFB project. Um, their holders 
went nuts for it. And yeah, we were able to donate three ex consecutive to uh, Autism South Africa to help them with you know, what they're doing. Um, they, you know, they try and do classes for parents who just found out that their little one is autistic. Um, trust me, there's a lot of stuff I wish I knew, which I know now, but which I wish I knew then. Um, you know, like you said, John Carlo, there's a, there's a lot of challenges involved. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff which, um, like, I know. Two hours later. Yeah, okay. This, almost, I'm almost done, okay? And I will come. You're almost there. Yeah, almost there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of challenges. Um, you know, you guys see a lot of the videos that I post on Twitter of my little one creating. But you have to keep in mind, he doesn't, listen, he creates a lot of the day, but there's a lot of other stuff that also happens during the course of the day. You know, he can have days where he's not feeling well and that he doesn't understand why he's not feeling well. And then it's going, then it's having to go to the doctor. And like I said, he's got a routine and if he gets sick, you know, that doesn't fit in with your routine. It's not something planned. So, you know, those are not things that I, you know, when he's sick, you know, he's sick. Um, we do the best we can. Um, there's a lot of times there's a meltdown because now the routine is being broken because we have to go to the doctor. Then he might not like the doctor and he might tell me he's not going in here because he does not like the doctor. We have to now go find another doctor. Um, then he might not like the road we're taking to go to the other doctor. So, listen, there's a lot that can happen on this end. Um, but yeah, so we are working on a mint of 1,331 um, of his physical abstract pieces. Um, you might wonder why such a specific number. Yeah, if you I add was all wondering. Them, yeah. Go ahead. If you add all those numbers together, you get the number eight, which in our household is the affinity sign, which is the sign for autism acceptance. So that is why there is such a specific number to that mint. Um, the idea behind this mint is, well, there's a few ideas actually what it is going to do at the end of the day. Um, we would like to see more of Caden's physical artwork in people's hands. We want to see more people being proud to hang a Caden abstract on their wall. Um, now, in the last, I think probably the last five or six months, we already have 28 of these physical pieces, which have been shipped. I actually shipped another one this morning, which was really exciting. Um, and the people who actually own these pieces, they are really proud to hold a piece from my son, um, the physical piece. Um, so the idea is we are going to do it as a blind mint. Certain of the NFTs, if you hold that NFT, you get to claim the physical, which is linked to that NFT. 30% of mint funds, um, we are in the process. Um, when we came up with this idea, I did not know how much is involved. But we are in the process of establishing a foundation, which I'm going to have no hand in. It's not um, got people who are will be sitting on the board of this foundation. The idea is to, in the States, help Autism America, to help parents who are struggling there, um, to help in Canada, to help in a few other African countries and also here in South Africa with you know, providing for people who are struggling, um, to also certain of these charities to help them to actually be able to um, present classes to parents who need some life skills. Um, you know, listen, I'll be honest with you, having a little one who's autistic, it can be really, really hard some days. Like, it can be super hard some days, especially if you go somewhere and, you know, I've, I've, I've been to places with Kate and we has a meltdown. Now, most people don't get that. I think he's busy being a normal little, let's say, four-year-old who's busy being naughty in the middle of a shop. Where, you know, you, you, John Collar, you talked about sensory issues earlier. One of Caden's sensory issues, which has gotten a lot better, but when he was little, he had a thing with his ears. Um, he did not do well with loud sounds. Like if someone, if, an, if another kid, like, like the kid is happy and the kid is yelling, Caden 
did not do well with that. He just could not cope with that. Um, now, a lot of these meltdowns happened in busy shops where it's loud, it's noisy, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. And, you know, luckily, you know, we went to school and they were like, listen, your little one's got sensory issues. Um, when you go out, here's a pair of headsets, put them on, and problem, problem solved. We don't have that problem anymore. But for a lot of people who do not know what that is, they just think he's busy being naughty, where he's not being naughty. He's just having a moment where he is struggling to cope. And that is his way of dealing with it. Um, so the idea is to be able to give classes to parents who just found out their little ones are autistic, give them some really, really much needed to have skills. Um, the idea is also to help parents who cannot afford to pay for therapies, um, who cannot afford to pay for medication. So 30% of all MIN funds um, will be set aside for that. 50% um, of all royalties will be going to the same foundation. <clears throat> um, the idea behind this foundation is that it will, in, in the long term, become self-sufficient, where the foundation will uh, approach certain projects which i cannot talk about right now but um the idea is that it will become self-sufficient where funds will flow into foundation foundation will keep on supporting families who need it keep on supporting classes which is much needed um and yeah then that is what we've been working on uh, we actually started this last year um there's a lot that goes into setting up a mint like that which i also didn't understand when we started um, FYI, if anyone ever wants to start doing physical pieces and start minting in the amount that we mint, scanning takes a big part of your day. It's a lot of work. Um, I am not friends with our scanner anymore. I don't like our scanner. Is it, um, is it a naughty it's, scanner too? <laughs> it, no, it's luckily not a naughty scanner. It's just... I don't think anyone understands this. And you know what? Go, go work it out. If you have to scan, let's say it takes you two minutes to scan something. Now go work out if you have to scan a hundred things. It's a lot of time that goes into scanning something. Um, so yeah, that's I, I don't love scanners anymore. I when I see them, I'm like, oh. but yeah, it's part of my daily routine as I scan stuff. Now, if you have to scan 1,331 pieces and it takes you about two minutes, it takes a long time to scan them. I did not even think about that when we started this. Um, between me and Bianca, we've actually selected like some of the coolest pieces he's created, which we want to put in this month. Like I said, we want to make it that certain of the pieces, if you hold them, it's a claimable piece where you can actually claim the physical piece. Uh, I've got someone who is helping me with the whole smart contract and also the metadata side of it, because if you claim the piece, the metadata gets updated that this piece has been claimed. So if you do relist it, that whoever buys it knows that they're buying it and there is no physical link to it anymore, um, which I felt was really important because I've seen some other people do the physical side of it, but the metadata just says that you can, it's a claimable but it never updates. So anyone who buys it on secondary is potentially buying it underneath false pretenses. And, you know, I don't want any misconception with any of the mints I do for Caden. Um, then also with his naughty robots, uh, we've got something really, really, really exciting we're working on there as well, um, which also comes with the idea of giving back. Um, I think over the next few weeks, I'm probably going to be using that a lot. But I feel that, you know, what you put out in this world will 100% come back to you. Um, it is, I just think a lot of people, a lot of people take and take and take and take, and they just never put back in. And that is not how it works. You cannot just take and take. You have to give back. Now, the NFT community has been super kind to me and my family. They've helped me get my son back in school. Um, I mean, and we just feel that there's so much more good that can be done. And Gaiden, like, he's got a collector's base. Like, 
very few other one of one artists has. He's got a collector space which is spread across 15 chains. He's actually have collectors who saw stuff, which this is one thing we've tried to do is certain of his collections is only available on a certain chain. And that is not how it started, but we very quickly realized we can encourage cross-pollination between chains by doing this. He's got collectors from Cardano who hold multi robots on Tezos because we were like, well, they're not going to go to Cardano. If you want one figured out, there's Tezos, here's the link. And, you know, like I said, he's got a collector space like none because we've had collectors from ETH mint stuff on Cardano. I've had collectors from Cardano mint stuff on Tezos. I've had, I've gone onto chains which some people have not even heard of. Um, I've met the amazing communities on those chains and they've come over to different chains because, like I said, there's stuff which is chain specific. The only collection that Kaden has, which is truly multi-chain and can actually be minted on 15 different blockchains, is his little hands. Um, that collection, we have taken it, we've split it up. It is still all one of ones. So if you've minted one on Polygon, you will never ever see that piece on any other chain ever again. Um, so yeah, that's stuff we've been working on. The big idea is to give back, to help. Because like I said, we've met a lot of... I will come. Sorry, getting a bit impatient on this end. Um, no, but what I was saying was, uh, you know, uh, we want to give back. We want to help because like I said, I know when we started this journey, before we got into NFTs, we are not the only family who are struggling out there. Um, like I said, I stood in a queue for three hours to get into a charity where I was told, sorry, we can't help. We don't have funding, number one, and we don't have the resources, number two. So I saw how many people were standing in that queue with me. And a lot of them were there for the same problem. They wanted help. They wanted help paying for um, you know, therapies. I wanted to know, listen, is there a subsidy to help me pay at least some of the school fees I have to pay for my kid? Um, so I know what it feels like. I know what that struggle feels like. I know how it, as you as a parent, how it can break you. Um, you know, so we would like to actually just, this is, this is this, another thing, this, the, the sad thing actually is we can't help everyone. As much as I would love to, um, I know what this costs. It's a lot of money. But we can take what we have and we can at least spread it to a certain extent that we can help as many as possible or at least give tools where it's needed. You know, I, like I said, there's, there's certain skills I've got now which I wish I had when he got diagnosed because it would have made his life, number one, a lot better and a lot easier. It would also have helped us as parents made our lives a little bit easier. Um, you know, because there were days that we were like, okay, we don't know what, what are we doing wrong? Um, you know, what, what, what are we supposed to do? How do you get, you know, how do you teach your little one to speak? You know, they're not speaking. Um, and the doctor who diagnosed him is telling you that he's never going to speak. You know, that was another thing. Um, I do feel that the medical side of things, like doctors who diagnose kids, you know, they really need to know how to approach this with parents. Um, the guy who told us Kaiden is autistic, he, he was so cold about it. He bluntly just told us, listen, there's no hope in hell. Your child is not going to speak. Sorry, nothing I can do for you. Once again, back to my wife. Um, she did not accept that. She was like, no, um, I'm not accepting this. This is not the answer I'm looking for. Um, because here's the thing. Can you imagine if you can't speak? Can you imagine going to a doctor and not being able to tell the doctor where it hurts, what is wrong? If you go to a shop and you can't explain to the shopkeeper, listen, I need this and this and this. It's it's difficult. It is it's not a great life. Um, so, yeah. 
Kaiden went on to not just the artistic journey, but he went on to a journey to learn how to speak. And I know how much work my little one had to put in just for the basic stuff. Um, how many exercises we had to sit and do every single day for him to be able just to make simple sounds. And, you know, some of those things I feel should not be charged for. Yes, those basic little things, you know, give those skills to parents who need them. Like, you know, for instance, um, very few people know this, but in order to speak, you use muscles. If those muscles don't develop, then you're not going to be able to speak. Now, there are simple little exercises which Caden had to do because his muscles and his face were just not developed correctly and not developed enough for him to be able to form sounds. So we had to sit and do exercises where he had to take a straw and blow a ping pong ball. As stupid as that sounds, that is stuff that we had to do, which actually helped develop his muscles in his face enough so he can actually start making sounds. Um, we had to do weird exercises with his tongue. There was like a whole range of stuff that we had to do, which I don't, you know, I know what we had to pay for speech therapy. It was a lot of money. It doesn't fully worth it because he get, he's, he's speaking now and he's getting better and better each day. But I feel there's certain things which give these skills to people who need it. There are people who need us and they can't afford to pay. Listen, his therapies alone a month works as like about 380 US currently. That is what we spend just on guidance therapies here in South Africa. Um, I feel a lot of it is stuff that can I give these skills to parents? Um, because there's a lot of people who can't afford that, especially here in South Africa. I mean, that is that is someone's rent a month, which we are paying for therapies. So there's a lot of developing nations where stuff is just so overpriced and people who need it just can't have it because they can't afford it. Um, I also feel that, you know, We've not quite figured out how to do this, but with some of the MINT funds, we want to make it possible to actually teach people about the blockchain, teach people what it can be used for, what you can actually achieve by approaching this correctly. I'm not saying go and teach people to mint every single thing that they create, because, listen, I've sat last week, I sat with Gaiden, he wanted to browse artwork. This is something we do every now and then. He'll take my hand and I have to open up OpenSea object. I have to open up every single NFT web page. And he wants to see what are people creating. And this is the first time I've heard my son telling me, no, close this. There's just too much bad art here. And this is coming from a eight-year-old telling me that there's just too much stuff here that should not be here. And, you know, to a certain degree, sadly, there's just maybe a lot of stuff which should never be minted onto the chain, onto blockchain, because it's, you know, I asked him afterwards and I said to him, but why do you say that? He said, all same. And, you know, what he's trying to say to me, I mean, it took me a while to click, but he's looking at something which is, it's all the same stuff. And I actually went back and I looked at what we were looking at and sadly I had to agree with him that it's just all the same. There's no, nothing special there. Um, so I'm not saying go and teach people just to go and make something and mint it and how to sell it. That is not what we want to do. It's to, if you are artists, you've got the opportunity to use the blockchain to mint your art and get another revenue stream. Because here's one other thing I know as well, is Kaden is a physical artist. He's not going to sell a physical print every two or three days. In the real art world, it doesn't work like that. Um, but through blockchain, he's been able to make, listen, at the, the peak of it, we were making literally every, I would say literally every day, we were making at least five, maybe we had, we've had days where we make 100 sales. So, you know, it, the possibility of doing that is there and to actually someone who is sitting struggling, but they're making the most incredible physical art, you know, you can teach them how to 
make their life just a little bit better, you know, take their art, put it on chain, make a living. You know, that's one of the things that we want to do with some of the mint funds. We just haven't quite figured out how to do that. I love it. I love the, the, the mission and, man, any ideas I have, I'll definitely <laughs> throw them your way. Cause I think it's, it is important for us to, to um, also to, yeah, educate more people on, on this space, the opportunities it can provide. And, um, and, and it, there's a big learning curve. Like I said, I mean, it's, it's, it's challenging, especially if somebody's very new to it and they've just been creating physical art, you know, now it's a lot of other elements and things that they, that they need to learn about, but, but yeah, it could definitely open up a lot of opportunities and options for them. So I love that, you know, you guys are also considering doing that with the mint. And I love that message of, you know, also, um, you know, wanting to give back, right. Reward people. And, you know, you've received a lot and also wanting to just, you know, give back and support a lot of these, uh, these causes as well. So no, I, I love that. And, Look forward to, to seeing the mint uh, and and when that when that comes comes about. Um, I know we have a couple of, of speakers on the stage. I wanted to get to them real quick, and I know you're probably gonna gotta get going a bit soon as well. So, um. <laughs> yeah, like you too. Um, that is being called at this end. So I said thirty more minutes, and then <laughs> okay, okay. So I know uh, I was gonna go first to our friend Chris Ida. Uh, how you doing, brother? Happy Saturday. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, man? I'm doing doing great. Just uh, yeah, happy to be here and hearing uh, you know more about Caden's beautiful story. Um, so happy to you know just connect with Nico and Caden here recently. I, I think I want to say it was um, you know all thanks to the One Love community that we kind of that I kind of you know came across. Them. I can't quite remember, but um, it's just been amazing, man. I mean, you truly are. Caden is not only an inspiration, but you, my brother, are an inspiration to us all um, as far as just what we can be, you know, for the world, man. I've, I've just absolutely loved this space, hearing more about Caden's art, um, you know, just much more in depth. And just, again, hats off to you, man. I had to come up and, you know, def wouldn't miss the space. Wouldn't have mattered if it was Sunday at 9 p.m. You know, I had to come in and show some love, brother. So y'all have a wonderful day. Chris, thank you so much for coming up. And yes, um, you know, I've met a lot of amazing people because of One Love. Um, you know, it's an amazing community. And, you know, it's, yeah, we, we, uh, we actually connected because of One Love. Um, you actually do it <laughs> correctly. And a lot of other people I've connected with because of One Love. Um, you know, with Jennifer and Luca and... Jazz has been putting together has actually been a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a estimate. it shows what can be done with, you know, putting together a proper community because you know, this is another thing I think a lot of people forget, you know, community is key to what you do here. Listen, guidance, what, what we built from here would be nothing without the community that we've built together with it. Um, yeah, Chris, I see your hand is up. Oh yeah, no man. I I didn't want to forget my question too. Uh, I was gonna ask: Does Caden particularly have like a favorite collab, maybe that he's done, or like an artist in you know in general that he's worked with in the space that just maybe one piece that he is just absolutely in love with that he's you know made or either made with someone else? Dude, you know what? Um, you're asking a very difficult question. Um, I did ask this question once. Um, I could not get a straight answer. Listen, my son, he, he remembers things like, listen, my memory is not even half of what he says. Like he knows every single piece he's ever created. Um, if there's a piece gone, and trust me, we have lost paintings before. Um, this is another thing he does. He takes his paintings out every now and then, and he, you know, he looks at them, he goes through them. Um, so he knows exactly what is there. Um, FYI, anyone who does ever want to own a physical piece, be ready for video calls to check if you're still looking <laughs> after the piece of art you borrowed you, that means words. Um, so, no. They're like all 
think of think of his paintings as his children. You cannot have a favorite one. They 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 all your favorites. Doesn't matter if it's a collab piece or if it's a piece he created. Um, he like I said, I've I asked that question once and I couldn't get a straight answer. And like I said, what it comes down to, if I look at you know even the NFTs he owns, he, he knows exactly how many they are. He knows what order they go in. He knows when he got what. Um, with his paintings, he knows exactly how. I don't even know how he keeps track, but he knows how many they are. He knows exactly how many he's created, uh, more or less when he created it, why he created it, uh, what color palette he used. Um, it's, you know, if you really want to start talking numbers to him, that's also a very fun, very long conversation. Uh, if you want to know his favorite number combination, it's one, two, three, four. Um, it's most likely also the passcode that my son will be using for everything else that he needs to use. <laughs> so, yeah, I, like I said, there is no straight answer when it comes to what is his favorite. Um, I would say all of them. Well, thank you for being here, brother, and coming up to to ask the question. Appreciate you, man, so much. All right, I think I was going to go next to uh, mi hermano Luco. How you doing? Happy Saturday. Hey, fam. Happy Saturday. How are you all? I'm just super Damn. happy to be here. Um, <laughs> how are you, my fam, my lovely fam? I really enjoy so much. Man, I am super emotional, I have to say, in this moment, for real. Um, I have been these days like vulnerability in myself. And listening to today's space was just, man, I am speechless, for real. And I wanted to, to, to give my two thoughts like about all the conversation. First of all, say hello to Nico. What's up, my bro? Man, you're amazing. For real, um, I respect you so, so much. I admire you so, so much for all the things that you've done. And as Giancarlo said, man, you are a, an amazing father, for real. Like, your soul and your spirit and your your brave spirit, man. Like, your brave spirit to keep going, no matter what, man. And your message of hope, it's just a beautiful thing for life. and. I think we all as humans need to to know this and need to have this in mind. Like sometimes we forget about these simple things, but really important ones in the life. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the things you, you do, for the energy you put every single day here. And of course, the things that you're doing for, for Kyle and man. Well, man, it's... It's beautiful, man, for real. And the second thing I wanted to say is that, man, I cannot miss this space, for real. <laughs> I told Jenny, like, <laughs> I need to take some rest. I need to take some time, but I, I'm going to be there. Like, you're my favorite peeps, and I have a really special connection with you guys, like your whole family, Nico. You know it, man. We have been talking, like, in on privately, and you know, you know, man, like, the connection that I have and listening to, to Kaiden today, like in, at the beginning of the space, man, was, oh my God, man, I was so, 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 so heartful and so just beautiful, man. Yesterday, I was in real event here in Bogota with the fam, with Juzapata, Hudasaka, and a lot of people here, like from Web3 in the Blockchain Summit. And in the night, we we got a, like a meet up, like all together be, after um, before the the party, the closing party. And we have a friend that his name is Camilo Romero, and he has a kid with special conditions, and he has done like a foundation, inspired in his son, a whole foundation with with special condition kits and we were talking about this and i meet he I, I meet him i meet mati like in real life it was my first time like talking or interacting with him and we was just saying with fabian buitrago that it's beautiful 
how how intense they feel the life and how genuinely they are like they are unique man like and i just feel that only listening to kaiden man and seeing him creating all the times that you share like in the twitter space video him when you send when we were um doing the call up together and you send me the videos from him i just say to you man thank you thank you for real from the bottom of my heart because listening to kaiden today remind me why the heck i create our man and why i do the things that i do because it's like this transparency connection that he has with the art he has with the colors he has with the with the soul man like he's just him with a, with nothing else man he's just him creating he's just going with the flow in the moment i love man because he's a r- real full time artist and he's gonna be he's giant in this moment and i was talking like a few weeks ago with with chris with edu in a one on one call and i was saying to him like i'm just so happy and so proud that i was able to do something together man because i know that i'm going to look forward man maybe 5 10 years and this piece that we create together is going to be forever man not only in my heart not only in my soul in the blockchain and i i know that i'm going to talk with kaiden and say bro <laughs> i did this with you time ago and i'm super happy and i'm proud and i feel full thank you for that and it's because this he's a kid man and you know and well most people know that art for me is a therapy but it's a, it's a, a way to connect with my inner kid so listening him seeing him creating working connecting being genuinely just remind me why i create man art and is a true inspiration to me to see his process and to see his journey and i'm just so happy man so proud i am in this moment i am not in my high energy of course but i am super man touch like i was here in the bed listening to all this stuff and connecting with that and man my tears go out for real like and for me is not easy man to cry and you made it it and i don't see cry as a bad thing man cry for me is a liberation and it's like a cure to my soul so i just wanted to came up man say thank you of course give you the whole flowers because you deserve it so much man i cannot wait to see that documentary for real because i know that i'm not going to see only one one time man for sure i'm going to see them all the times that i need because I really connect with Kaiden man and he connect like with my inner kid you know that I have a little brother is the same age of Kaiden so it's it's man it's crazy like this connection this soul connection I'm just speechless I'm happy and today man I'm going to go with the gang to paint some walls and I'm going to put all these things in that man all that love that you give me in this space Thank you so much for real. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, thank you Giancarlo, Jennifer, mis hermanos for create this moment, man. This moment for for the soul because is that. And man, you are the man, bro. Holy man, like the things that you done, the hope you put, man, every single day. You grind every single day, man, no matter what. you're in all in all man and that's that's the the real thing and that connect me a lot and remind me why are we here man why we are all together why is one love why is with the things that we are working beside anything beside the problems beside the situations beside whatever man we are here to keep going to keep pushing with love 
And of course, man, for the art, like, you know, I am just genuinely connected with Kaiden because I feel it's my, my kid, my inner kid creating in that. And without like ego and with all the stuff that we sometimes when we grow up, that's the intention, man. So I'm going to shut up. Sorry for taking the time, but I have it to, to put out there my feelings and I just super grateful with you all guys for today. Amazing Monday, amazing Saturday. And let's keep going. Let's keep rocking the vibe and let's keep creating with the soul and with the, the heart, man, like with no doubt. So you fam, I appreciate you all. Thanks for the moment. Thanks for the time. One love. Oh man, I appreciate you so much, brother. Thank you for you know coming and sharing your your feelings with us and you know just everything you said just you know so beautiful and i'm glad that this space you know touched you so much and and it just filled you with all that 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 good love that good energy and hopefully you'll be able to put like you said put it all into that <laughs> those walls you're going to paint today brother but uh yeah i love you man and uh yeah i hope you have an um, awesome rest of your day awesome time with the with the, the homies there in colombia <laughs> and i see jenny uh, has her hand up as well yeah i wanted to say good morning to luco um thank you so much for sharing from the soul and uh, i wanted to say something that came up as i heard all of you speak um i really think that uh unfortunately doctors don't realize um, that actually neurodivergency and autism are true gifts. These are human beings that are gifts to us. And the sooner that we start to see that as a society, um, as medical practitioners, as just in general, the better we will all be for it. Um, they teach us daily. They teach us what it is to approach something from an authentic and pure place. Um, and I, I really like the the part that Nico was saying about how uh, one of the things that he was hoping to do is to empower parents with the skills. Um, and I think on a broader level, we need to all be empowered as a society because truly once we understand how it is that they express themselves and what it is that they're here to teach all of us, I think the better. Um, so yeah, I just I, I wanted to to mention that that thought came up while we were all talking. Yeah, thank you, Jenny, for bringing that up. I think that is such an important point. Um, I know we actually came up in some other spaces uh, we've had here, and and um, you know it's something that I've also started to to embrace more. You know, because I think you're right. A lot of times people will label neurodivergence as like a disability you know or something like that but no it's actually can be a gift right and and um you know some of them can see the world in different ways can express things in you know just have so much you know beauty and love and creativity and and we need to learn to just um you know and as nico was saying like as parents you'll know, be able to like embrace that harness that and help them you know become the best version of themselves so so no i love that thank you for breaking that up um i know we have a, a couple other people on the stage i think anna was uh the next one i had on the list hey anna how you doing happy saturday how are you oh my goodness happy saturday guys i would have not missed this in the world so the, the before i start saying my love and admiration for nico i want to say good morning to you john carlo good morning to you jennifer and happy happy birthday to your girl carmen i am so so happy to i can tell you that in boys and carlos is listening i already spoke to him this morning so happy birthday to carmen wish you wish her nothing but the best for all her wishes to come true to continue to create and become what she aims to what's what would make her happy that's that's what my wish for her would be 
So um, now um, I'm very honored to be here because, you know, I love what you guys are doing, Giancarlo and Jennifer. I absolutely adore it that you you highlight, you know, uh, all artists. It doesn't have to be big or small, but you highlight people who, well, in this particular case, truly, truly deserve. Because, look, and, I am... And let's make sure, I just want to correct on something you said there, right? There's no big or small artists, right? There's just artists that maybe no, are or small. more established or, yes... We are all yeah. all wonderful beings, yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to know what correct one. It. So absolutely, yes, my my bad. So um I, and there's so much that I wanna say, but again, uh if I miss miss say something, please forgive me. Don't 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 my bad. Uh it's, it's definitely not fucking bad. Anyway, so uh, we all equally creative and uh we aim to showcase our art in the best possible way and you know so First, I want to also say uh, thank you, Nika, for all that you do. I am truly honored that, you know, uh, I was able to come across you and Caden and, and my life. I certainly will. I'm looking forward to collecting some robots. Uh, I already told uh, Matilli that uh, I need a heads up. Please give me that sneak peek. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I saw those animations. Uh, and I'm absolutely obsessed. So looking forward to that drop for sure. You know, the second thing that I'm going to say, it, it is fascinating what the, you know, the ability to create and uh, be, you know, let Caden be so happy doing it. Like, you know, I have a daughter who I've been seen creating since she was, I can remember even, you know, and now she's 16 and she's creating these phenomenal words that make me so happy and proud so i can only feel what you're feeling seeing caden create and uh and the way he does it it is just so vibrant and it's so beautiful and it, it's just it brings joy to my heart let's just say that now and, and the, in addition to to what i'm gonna say is it makes me really, really honored that he chose Luna to collaborate with. And I'm truly, truly, truly so thankful for the experience. And believe me, that that, that love goes both ways. I know you've expressed it to me in uh, in the comments, but I, I just want to tell you in person that, you know, um, it is really an honor that you guys, uh, you know, well, Caden decided to say, hey, let's go, let's collaborate. I mean... What can I say? Uh, it, it, it's absolutely a joy. And uh, maybe just a question if uh, he had any reference thoughts uh, to to Luna or, you know, what he thought of this drawing, you know, if you have any. I would greatly appreciate that. If not, then it's fine. It's totally fine. The fact that I have a collab with you guys, that is a big, 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 big accomplishment. Um, funny you should ask, and I actually wish you was still sitting still here next to me, which I don't think I'm going to get him to do now. Um, but <laughs> when I showed it to him, he told me it's a moon flower. Um, and he pointed to the flowers that you drew. Um, so now, listen, he thought it was really cool. And trust me, if he didn't like it, he would not have said yes. Um, I just want to mention this for anyone who's not aware. Um, when it comes to collaborations, um, normally I will see something or I will receive a DM and then I will go and show my son and I say, listen, do you want to collab with this person? And he normally says yes or no. And he's had some artists who he saw their art and really liked what they're doing. And he asked me if I could message them because he wants to paint with them. Um, Luca being one of them, he wanted badly to paint with Luca and they did paint together and they both loved what they created. But no, Anna, he, he, he thinks it's a moonflower and he really likes it. Um, and yeah, I think what you two created is really, really beautiful. I love it. Thank you, thank you. It really melts my heart. It 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 is a flower moon, little moon flower. Uh, it's uh, not, not only I do like I take pride on creating flowers because they make me happy. And you know, generally speaking, you know, when I'm in the process of creating, that 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 is my escape from the reality or the crazy crazy things that may be happening out there in the world like i don't want to think about those you know like i this is the reason why i started to create because i did not want to think about them you know as uh, funny as it may sound or silly but 
it is my time when I get to escape from everything and everyone when I am in the process of creation and drawing flowers, drawing moons, uh, half moons, not, not the full circles, but half moons is it has been, you know, uh, my passion for the past five years. So thank you, Nico. Thank you, Caden, for allowing me to showcase my art with yours. So it is, it is a true honor and uh, looking forward to seeing more creativity from Caden in the future, especially the animated robots. Just saying. Hint, hint. <laughs> I, oh, man, I know you're feeling that. That, that Matilli uh, collab, I, I loved it when I saw it. And then I went to go buy one. And they were already like sold out and somebody had like priced it higher. I'm like, oh, no, I missed it. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was such a cool collab. I hope she does another one of those at some point or they do something else with some more uh, animated robots for sure. But uh, thank you so much for coming, Anna. Uh, appreciate you so much. I know you're a regular listener of the space, so really, really appreciate that uh, you, you regularly tune in, you come up to speak on the stage here, and um, I also just love all the artwork you make. And I got to say, I've been really enjoying just seeing more and more of those Luna collab pieces because the creativity is just like mind-blowing. I mean, it's just so cool, all the different ways people have used it, the, the moon in this way or that way. So, so really cool to see that. Oh, go ahead. You have your hand up. Just, just wanted to put out, uh, put it out there. Today is the last day to to make any submissions. Tomorrow I'm gonna be out. We are driving to Orlando. My son has a soccer game, two of them actually. So oh, wow. I will be online, but I will not be accepting any more uh, collaboration requests as of today, by midnight. Let's just say that. So hurry. <laughs> right now we have over fifty people that have participated in this. Luna collaboration and it, 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 it's just overjoyous to see so much creativity that take place from people, especially those that have special skills in animating art. That that has oh my god, that, that it just makes me happy to see that. And of, of course, very, very grateful to everyone who participated. It. Uh thank you guys for, for all the love. Thank you. Oh, thanks for letting us know about that. <laughs> so noted. Today's the last day. Um, all right, I was going to go next to Lil Gaines, and I know we're going to have to wrap up pretty soon because we have a hard stop at noon uh, Eastern time. So hopefully we can get through the last two speakers. Uh, all right, Lil Gaines, how you doing? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Is my audio okay? Yep, your audio is fine. How you doing? Hey, good morning, good morning. I'm doing great. Just want to, just quickly, I'm not going to take too much time, just want to say thank you so much to Nico and everything he's doing. He's been helping me host spaces for our NFT marketplace, Stargaze. And one thing he's taught me is be very consistent. Don't give up. I know sometimes we get a little bit burnt out or, you know, sometimes we're like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't host this space today, maybe next week. But he's, he's you know, kept going. He's taught me to be consistent and not give up. I uh, just want to say thank you so much, Nico, for, for really helping me with those spaces and connecting other artists with the community over here at Stargaze. Um, man, I just can't thank you enough, bro. Really, really love what you're doing. And, dude, I know a lot of people in Web3 and in real life that have a very crazy work ethic, and you outshine them, dude. You work a lot. I hope that maybe sometime soon you can take a little break to relax and take the family out. Man, but, yeah, you're you're always grinding, bro. Thank you, Thank you so much for everything you do, bro. I was waiting to see if you wanted to respond. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I thought we were going to go over to our next speaker, but no, little guys, it's a real pleasure. Um, yeah, I think consistency is super important in whatever you do, yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, both host and co-host and myself actually have to like kind of hop off in the next five minutes or so. So I'm going to go on to your next speaker and then sure. we can sure. wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. Sounds good. All right, uh, I think Dami uh, was the last one. How you doing? Happy Saturday. Um, peace and greetings, Juan Carlo and Jennifer. Thank you so much for the hosting of this space. Obviously, you guys have been doing this for uh, 47 episodes, but um, having <sighs> Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Nico. Um, look, I'm just going to be transparent and honest, as I always am. Um, 
Nico was like a thorn for me uh, a very long time ago because he was so consistent with his presentation. Um, and this is how he earned the title of Obi-Wan Kenobi in my heart because it's like Star Wars. It plays over and over again in my VCR and he plays over and over in spaces. But um, Nico, I just want to say this to you publicly, my friend. I was going to say and wait for our space later, but I will say, you know, for a while I used to feel that you were privileged to have me as your co-host um, week after week. I'm like, you got domies, man. But I assure you, I am so grateful and honored, um, not just from hearing from you today, but just, you know, over the last couple of months that we've been building and growing um, to be able to be able to tap in with you, not just uh, the likes of what you do for your son and the heart that you have, but uh, just the love and support that you give to the community and to be able to share the stage with you on a weekly basis and to know, uh, you know, to have the relationship I have with you, my friend, uh, really means a lot. Uh, and just to uh, keep it on the shorts, you know, and uh, Luco definitely touched on it. And uh, you definitely got me in my feels today. Uh, the hope is so important. Um, you know where I'm at. And it, it, it definitely it hit more than just a chord. So uh, it, it was really great just to hear you just really come from the heart today and speak about so much about your experience a little more than we typically do as we're just having some fun, man. So um, just know uh, my heart is full knowing that I'm tapped in with the legendary <clears throat> Nico. Uh, thank you again, uh, Juan Carlo and Jennifer, for the space. It was really great. And the way you all started to have Caden up here, uh, I love this little man, uh, a.k.a. little man, um, doing his thing. And he is such a talent. So it was really a jump off. And what a beautiful space. And, uh, yeah, thanks for letting me come up and uh, throw some flowers to my man one more time. Nico. <laughs> Oh, that means thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, for anyone who's not aware, not aware, um, I do actually host my own spices. I've got one spice, which is for my little hands community, which has been going for over a year and a half now. And I have not missed a single Saturday consistency once again. And Domis is my co-host. Um, he's been helping me hold it down for, like I said, a year and a half. And consistency is super important to me um but yeah Thomas, thank you so much for all the kind words little gains thank you for the kind words really do appreciate it oh wait i think i think you're on mute uh I like a... sorry am i coming through now yeah what I was saying is, no, I just wanted to thank Tommy. So I don't know how much of that came through. Sorry, I must have my mistake. No, we heard most of it. Yeah, we heard most of uh, Yeah. So, and then FYI, for anyone who is wondering, there is still four drops of the Metally Art animated robots, which need to happen. They will be dropping together with all the other ones on a weekly basis. So, yeah, keep your eyes out. Well, I will definitely be on the lookout for that. <laughs> so... I have noted it, um, but no, yeah, thank you, Domis, for, for coming up. Uh, again, wanted to, well, first and foremost, thank the everybody that was in the space today, all the listeners, the people that came up to speak. Uh, appreciate you guys for just tuning in to listening to this, the story, the spotlight today. Uh, very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you, Nico, so much, um, you know, for, for coming on this space today, for everything you've been doing for for this community, um, everything you've been doing, you know, as a father to to Caden, and uh, and really for just sharing this wonderful and inspirational story with all of us today, I'm very much looking forward to the the documentary, to the upcoming Mint, and just continuing to see you know Caden's artistic journey, you know, and and uh, I love kind of like what Luca was talking about, you know, fast forwarding into the future and. You know, and just just seeing everything that, that he started, that he continues to create, you know, in his uh, in his lifetime. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for being here today, and and also wanted to thank Caden, you know, for for coming on and talking to us and showing us his his beautiful and colorful art, and you know, he he has just such a a beautiful vibe and energy to him, and uh, it was it was also really wonderful to get to talk to him a little bit as well. So, thank you guys so much for being here today. Okay, thank you so much for having us and for spotlighting my little one. I really do appreciate it. It's our pleasure.
All right, everyone. Well, yeah, and now we do go <laughs> the drop off. So uh, thanks, everyone, again. I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday and a wonderful weekend. Um, if somebody didn't catch part of the space, just know that it is recorded. So you can always listen in to something, uh, part you missed. And we also do have a, a, a live stream. Uh, you can catch it also there on, on Twitter or also on my uh, YouTube page. Um, so if you want to also see the, the video part, I think the Caden the piece would be cool for you to watch the video portion of because he was kind of showing us his little paintings and everything. So I uh, would highly recommend that. But anyhow, so thanks, everyone, for being here. Appreciate you all. Have a great day and weekend. Bye-bye. I don't know if he'll be able to hear me because you probably have the, the speakers on low, but... Uh...